all we expect so in and help us to select the plant which have the desirable trait the best example is sona masuri so uh, without any further delay we are going to start the session yes sir we can start uh, hello i am visible audible yes now yes. we are visible sir okay good afternoon all so i'll talk about developing plants or crops of our choice okay so when we talk about uh, uh, developing plants or crops of our choice first what are the farmers choice what farmers prefer one of the first choice what farmers prefer is a uh, higher yield because if they get higher yield they will get uh, higher price they will get benefit more benefit then the other choice the second choice is tolerant to biotic stresses farmers what they prefer is the crops which which are resistant to insect pests or diseases so that they have to use less uh, uh, input or pesticides agrochemicals to control the disease and again they can save uh, their uh, input cost then what farmers need is a tolerant to abiotic stresses uh, they want crops which are uh, resistant to uh, uh, tolerant to like flooding situation or to cyclone condition or to drought condition so that they they can uh, save their crop and then they want also crop with enhanced shelf life like in the case of tomato if they have a tomato variety which can stay for a uh, uh, longer time then they can store and then uh, they they get a better price also what they prefer is a crop with better nutrition so that th they can get or they can expect a more more price similarly as a consumer what is, what are our choice what we prefer we want healthy uh, crops we want crops with better nutrition we want crops which are free from pesticides and harmful harm, harmful chemicals okay also we want crops that taste better or or aroma is better so quality should be better now from environmental point like what are the choices that we prefer so again uh crop should be tolerant to biotic stresses so that we use less uh, agrochemicals pesticides crop should be tolerant to drought so that we use uh, we can grow crop in limited water condition and then also crops that need less uh, chemical fertilizers so as a researcher now uh, here in ccmb we are trying to address some of these uh, issues and we are working on some of these traits like Uh, crops that give uh, higher yield that are tolerant to biotic stresses and then tolerant to abiotic stresses and also uh, with better nutrition also the question is can we make a super crop which will have a multiple traits on it it will give higher yield it should be resistant to biotic stresses it should be resistant to abiotic stresses and also with better nutrition so how to develop crops of our choice so as you all know the traits are controlled by genes okay and then gene is a segment of dna that encodes into rna and protein and these traits they could be either monogenic or polygenic so one single gene can control the uh, trait or there there could be many genes that that could control the trait so how we can transfer these traits or genes from one plant to another plant or from one source to another source so the methods are uh, first is transgenesis then there is traditional plant breeding and then third is marker assisted breeding or marker assisted selection so what is transgenesis okay so transgenesis involves taking an uh, isolated gene of interest so it could be 
from any source, from bacteria, from plant, and then we can modify it in a tube. And then again, we can re reintroduce into the crop of interest. So this is called transgenesis. So as I said, the source of gene can be from any organism, okay? And it can be introduced into any crop of interest. So the steps in transgenesis are like the desired gene from any source, we can isolate like from bacteria, from plant. We can clone these uh, gene into a suitable plant vector and then transform into plant using a tissue culture uh, technique. And then we select and we do further breeding. So this is a one uh, representative example of uh, transgenesis. You all might have heard about golden rice. So this normal rice lacks uh, two crucial genes in endosperm that synthesize beta carotene. Okay, so this normal rice doesn't have these two genes and that's why there's no synthesis of beta carotene. So what they have done, they have uh, introduced these two genes, one from daffodil, this phytoin synthase, and other gene carotene desaturase from Arvinia uridovora. And they introduced into rice and now rice makes this yellow pigment. You can see yellow color. It's big beta carotene. It's a pro vitamin A. So this is called a golden rice one, but it produced less amount amount of beta carotene. They have further uh, improved. They have taken phytoin synthase a gene from maize, and now it makes uh, more lot amount of beta carotene. Okay. So this is uh, how uh, transgenesis can be useful. Okay, now coming to traditional plant breeding. Okay, so in traditional plant breeding, what we do, we have one particular plant, which is called a recipient plant. And we have another plant from which we want to transfer some of the trait, which will have a des desired trait. It, it may have a disease resistant. It may have some uh, uh, better nutrient. So it, it can have any, any trait. So in traditional plant breeding, what we do, we cross these two plants, recipient plant and donor plant, and then we get hybrid. This hybrid is then self to get F2 plants. So we get a large population of F2 plants. And then based on the trait, what we use uh, the donor plant, we then screen phenotypically, okay? If donor is for salinity tolerance, then we screen the population for salinity tolerance. If donor is for bacterial blight uh, disease resistance, then we screen the population for bacterial blight uh, resistance. And if it is like low phosphorus, if it has low phosphorus trait, then on field we uh, screen the population for low phosphorus trait. So, to compare transgenesis and uh, traditional plant breeding. So in transgenesis, gene can be from any source. One single or desired gene is introduced into any plant of interest. So in this case, we get only the gene of interest introduced into plant of our interest. But in traditional plant breeding, what happens? The donor plant is crossed with plant of interest. So in this case, not only the desired gene of interest, the additional reasons also get introduced, okay? We also get some unwanted reason introduced in, into this uh, method. So here then it comes marker-assisted breeding or marker-assisted selection, okay? So what it is, uh, DNA markers act as mile, milestones on the genome. Okay, or they are the reasons on the DNA, which may be associated with specific trait or phenotype. So if this is the genome, and this is the reason that is responsible for phenotype, then you can see these two red, red flags. They can use as a marker to know if this reason is get transferred when we did uh, uh, breeding. Okay, so 
the assumption here is these DNA markers can reliably predict the phenotype. They should be linked to the phenotype. So how we do marker assisted breeding? Again, uh, we cross the one parent one with parent two. In this case, suppose parent one is susceptible for a particular uh, disease, like bacterial blight disease, and then plant two is resistant for that disease. So it has a resistant gene for that uh, disease. When we cross, we get hybrid, and then again we self to get F2 population. Here you have to uh, notice this band here. So this is a susceptible, uh, it's a like when we do PCR, we amplify the gene, we can see the gene size product, okay? So in susceptible variety, it is giving a higher size of product. In resistant variety, it is giving lower size of product. Okay. So now F2 population, we can screen based on this size of the uh, this gene, okay? Whether it has susceptible uh, allele or it has uh, resistant allele. So we, we don't have to do phenotypic screening on the uh, say field or on the greenhouse. What we can do in the lab, we can test these plants, which of them have the resistant LA. Okay, And then we can select only those plants considering that they will have the uh, desired trait. It will have the resistant phenotype. So what are the advantages of uh, marker assisted selection? It's a simpler method compared to uh, traditional phenotyping uh, screening, especially for traits that are very laborious, like uh, nitrogen use efficiency in the field condition. Also, it saves time and resources, okay? because this we can do in the lab. We don't need to go to uh, field uh, screening. Then also we can do this selection on the seedling stage itself. Consider if you have to uh, do the screening for grain quality traits. Grain you will get only uh, when plants mature and uh, they will have grains. But if we know the trait, uh, the marker related to that grain trait, then we can screen in seedling stage itself. Okay, we don't uh, need to wait till harvest stage. And then it is more accurate and efficient selection of genotype. Specific genotypes can be done. We can uh, celebrate the variety development program. And also it helps in more efficient use of resources uh, because we don't have to do a lot of field related activities. But to do marker assisted selection, what is uh, required is markers must be polymorphic, okay? If both the parents, they give same size of PCR band, same size of this fragment, then we can't use this as a marker. It should be polymorphic. One parent and other, another parent, there should be difference in the uh, susceptible and resistant. Okay, so marker should clearly differentiate um, the between two parents, okay? So the other advantage of uh, using marker assisted selection is we can do gene pyramiding. That means we can combine multiple genes into one single plant, which is uh, kind of difficult using conventional plant breeding method. Also uh, like, uh, if you consider phenotyping of a single plant for multiple disease resistant, then it is really difficult. But if we use this marker technology, the uh, molecular breeding technology, then we can use. And popular examples include improved Samba Muscuri rice, which uh, we have developed in CCMB. So we combine three genes, XA21, XA13, and XA5 into a popular rice variety uh, Samba Masuri, which I'll tell you uh, now. And then again, like combining genes for blast resistance. These are the resistant gene for blast resist resistance. So like that, 
not only one particular uh, trait but also we can combine multiple genes related to different traits okay. so now coming to work that we have done at ccmb what uh, uh, we have done is uh, we developed improved samba masuri from samba masuri so samba masuri is a popular rice variety of india it is a high yielding variety it has very uh, good grain quality it is fine grain rice variety and also it has excellent cooking quality so farmers they get a high high price uh, market price because of uh, the good quality but this variety is uh, highly susceptible to one of the disease called bacterial uh, blight disease okay so what is bacterial leaf blight disease this disease is uh, called uh, caused by this bacterium called xanthomonas soryzi pathovirus so when we infect a rice leaf with uh, this bacteria it causes this yellowing disease lesion center okay so this leaf is uh, inoculated just by water it's a mock inoculation you can see no disease and this leaf is inoculated by bacteria how we inoculate uh, uh, a rice leaf we grow the bacteria the, in a liquid culture we dip a scissor and then we make a cut on the rice leaf so and then after 10 to 14 days we can see the disease lesion center in severe infection condition you can see the whole field looks like dried out and because of this then there could be yield loss from uh, 50 to 70% and there are no effective chemicals to control uh, this disease and then de developing resistant rice cultivars is the most effective way to control uh, this disease and then if we use a single resistance gene the pathogen can overcome uh, this disease and so rice variety should be developed that contain uh, multiple genes of resistance against this uh, infection okay so we have identified uh, multiple genes that are uh, involved in resistance of this uh, bacterial blight pathogen and three of the rice resistant uh, bacterial blight resistance genes which are effective against all the indian strains we have identified and used in our program so what we did this is samba masuri which is which has a fine quality which is a high yielding uh, rice variety but it is susceptible to bacterial blight disease we cross with one donor variety which has like poor, poor quality but it has three bacterial blight resistance genes so this variety is resistant to bacterial blight disease okay so through molecular breeding approach through marker assisted selection we brought these three bacterial blight resistance genes into samba masuri which now we call as improved samba masuri so improved samba masuri has all the fine quality of samba masuri it is high yielding but now it is resistant to bacterial blight disease okay and this work we have done in collaboration with indian institute of rice research now you can see this leaf a is samba masuri leaf like i explain how we inoculate and you can see upon infection inoculation you can see the disease lesion and this leaf b is improved samba masuri and there is no disease lesion you can see here also and in the field condition again this field is samba masuri you can see disease lesion symptoms the yellowing and this field is in, improved samba masuri and it is free from disease one more uh, field picture here samba masuri just here it severely affected uh, from back bacterial blight and this is improved samba masuri field and also the grain and cooking quality of improved samba masuri is similar to samba masuri so actually uh, we have done four back process so that it maintains the quality of samba masuri otherwise the consumers which prefer to take samba masuri they will not accept this variety so grain you can see it looks exactly like samba masuri and cooking quality is also like samba masuri 
and so this variety is already released by government of india it is not a transgenic crop and it is uh, becoming very popular and it is helping the farmers like because then they don't have to use chemicals to control bacterial leaf blight disease it is already uh, resistant for that disease and this improved samba masuri is also uh, low gi rice it's a low glycemic index rice so in that way it is also uh, it's like diabetic friendly rice and uh, now we are popularizing this variety uh, to different states in uh, india also we have licensed this uh, rice to a company and uh, soon i think it will be available in the market as a diabetic friendly rice so bacterial leaf blight is one of the problem that we have addressed okay through marker assisted selection there are many other problems in rice there are many other biotic stresses like there is a blast disease it's a fungal disease okay that again affect the um, crop yield then there is this brown plant hopper it's a insect pest it also um, it infest the rice then there are several abiotic stresses like there is flooding situation there is drought then there is lodging problem because of uh, cyclone or uh, heavy wind the crop you can see it is uh, like it is not standing and then because of this farmers will have a loss then again farmers need higher yield they need uh, uh, crop that that are uh, re resistant or tolerant to low soil phosphorus also salinity is one of the abiotic stress so we are further improving improved samba masuri there are genes known for all these traits and through marker assisted selection we are bringing these genes into improved samba masuri and trying to make kind of super crop you can say a super improved samba masuri that will have multiple biotic and abiotic uh, stress related tolerant related traits traits also which will have higher yield so what we know is marker assisted selection works okay but this marker assisted selection we can use only if the variations are available in the gene pool of a particular plant or in this case rice so can we extend the scope of marker assisted selection to provide solutions for traits which are not available in the gene pool of rice okay and the answer is yes we can increase the extent of variation using mutagenesis by developing a mutagenized population and then we can screen the population for traits of our interest like in this case the traits of our interest uh, are two biotic stress related traits one is uh, yellow stem borer and the other is sheep black okay so yellow stem borer you can see here this is the insect pest it uh, uh, cause two symptom like symptoms and on uh, young stage it, it cause dead heart symptom and in reproductive stage it cause white ear symptom you can see the panicles which are white so these are empty grains and it is a loss for the farmer okay and there are no known source of tolerance in the rice germ plasm so what we did we did mutagenesis and then we screened the mutant population for this uh, ysb infection and we identified a mutant line that shows tolerance to ysb infection you can see this is a samba masuri plant and you can see dead heart symptom there is one of this mutant line is uh, very healthy there is no infestation symptom also in a reproductive stage we can see that tol tolerant mutant there is no uh, white ear symptom whereas in samba masuri and susceptible line you can see these uh, white ears the other major problem in rice is this uh, 
sheath blight disease, which is caused by a fungal pathogen called Rhizoctonia solani. And you can see the disease symptom on rice leaf and also on the sheath of the rice plant. Okay. And there are very few uh, rice varieties that have uh, low level of tolerance for this disease. So we need a good source uh, which we can use uh, to, to make a tolerant rice variety for sheath blight. You can see one of our mutant line that shows tolerant to sheath blight disease, whereas this is Samba Masuri um, rice that shows the sheath blight symptom. So now we have these mutant lines and we there are techniques and tools uh, like next generation sequencing and bioinformatics analysis by using, now we can map the mutations, like which are the genes which are responsible uh, to giving these phenotypes, which are responsible to making these uh, mutant lines tolerant to yellow stem borer or sheath blight. And once we map those uh, regions, we identify the markers, we can use those markers to make uh, yellow stem borer or sheath blight tolerant, include some Masuri rice or other important uh, commercially rice varieties. So to summarize, marker assist, we have used marker assisted selection to make a bacterial blight uh, disease resistant rice variety like include Samba Masuri. And then we are using marker assisted selection to make rice varieties that are resistant to multiple biotic and abiotic stresses. And then also we are trying to extend the scope of marker assisted selection to provide solutions but rates which are not available in the gene pool of rice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. That was a very thought provoking uh, session. So now we have some questions, some basic questions. Yeah. Uh, Santosh is asking, what is tolerance? Uh, like you have already answered, so you, you mind to answer it again? Yeah, tolerant. Tolerant means it is tolerant or resistant. So like susceptible means it will show the disease symptom and tolerant means it, there will not be like disease on that. So that is a tolerant. Um, so the next question is, uh, can we make crops artificially, which can be better than organic ones with less maturity rate? Uh, with less maturity, yes, possible. Even in the case of uh, our mutant population, we have screened rice, uh, uh, these mutant population, we have identified a rice line that matures early compared to the parent line. So it is possible. Yes, sir. The next question is, is actually a biotechnological question. Uh, is it possible to combine, combine all genes of different plants and uh, to make a new crop? Uh, to use marker assisted selection, the important is we should be able to do process. So it should be same uh, species of plants, not like different uh, crops. But if crossing is possible, then only we can do marker assisted selection, right? So that gene has to be there. And okay. Yes, sir, understood. So the next question is, uh, what is MAS? MAS, MAS is uh, full form is marker resistant selection. Okay, so like when we do traditional breeding, we do phenotyping, okay? In the case of marker resistant selection, what we do, we select the plant based on the marker. Okay. marker which is linked to the phenotype so if yeah. you have that marker that means that plant will have that phenotype yes and that was our last question so that was a very uh, thought-provoking session sir thank you so much so now we are moving